Hello everybody, I hope you are doing well today. If you know it, say it with me. I got my coffee, I just spilled on myself. I've got my Bible, of course I have all of you. Today is National Wiggle Your Toes Day. So, I mean, sometimes these just be some weird ones, I don't know, but, but you know what? It does remind me of being thankful for little things because if you know someone like I do who is uh, um, paralyzed from the waist down, they would love to wiggle their toes. So how about we do it like this? Let it be National Thank God for the Little Things Day to be thankful, right? Okay, welcome to Galatians chapter six. And I have absolutely loved, loved, loved this one. I tell you, I loved it so much. And you really owe it to yourself to go and read this over again it's six short chapters doesn't take very long and it's very 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 good and also look in church history because after this was over with there was still a lot of stuff that happened in the church of galatia and it was really really good and so as we finish this i want to read you a verse and then i want to tell you about a story that jesus told to get this same point across uh first here's the here's the scripture that that paul said that i love so much that caught me today Galatians chapter 6, verse 8 and 9, it says, Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest de decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Now, and I believe it was Aesop's fables. He had the famous fable of the tortoise and the hare, right? This idea of the, the rabbit should be so much faster than the turtle, but spoiler alert, the, tur the turtle wins, not because he was fast, but because he was faithful. And he kept going forward and he won the race. Well, many, 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 many years before, I think it was Aesop did that, Jesus tells the story of the importance of faithfulness. And he says, that there was a rich young ruler who was going off to a faraway land and he left his affairs, his businesses, in the, the trust of three of his employees. And back then, uh, one of the, like, you know, in, in, uh, in Asia and in China, they have uh, the, the uh, oh Lord, the, I can't say it now, I can't forget it, but it's certain money type, you know, and they've got the Euro in Europe, you know, in the United States they have the dollar. Well. And that time they had a certain uh, amount of gold called a talent. Now, now we look at it as the ability to do something. It's kind of cool the way the story works, but back then it was a unit of measurement, a yen, so I was trying to think of China. But then was a talent, and a talent was roughly, depending on estimates, about a year's wage. So let's say the, the let's say you make $60,000 a year, a talent was $60,000 a year. Well, he had, this guy had three employees, he left one employee, five talents to the second employee he left three talents and the third employee he left one talent and he told them to you know basically look after his money while he was gone well he's gone for a while and he comes back and he's here to settle up affairs and and now he's he you know, he's went and he's gained even more wealth and so he goes and the, the one who had five said hey you know what I took this five and I was faithful with it and I went and I invested it and I now have five more for you. And the rich young ruler says, thank you, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little, now enjoy the blessings of many. And he blesses him, he goes on. Well, the guy with three comes in and says, you gave me three, I went and invested it, I worked really hard and I made three more for you. And the rich young ruler, ruler says, um, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into, you've been uh, faithful with a little, now you have a lot. Then he goes to the guy who had one. The guy who has one said, I, I know that you are uh, a shrewd businessman. I know that you you know, are really good at what you do. And I was afraid. I was afraid to really do anything with this. And so I went and I hid it. And I didn't lose your money. I didn't lose it. But I didn't do anything with it. And I'm giving it back to you. And the rich young ruler was, was furious. And he said, you could have at least put it in the bank where it could have gotten interest and got something, but you didn't do anything with it. And, and I wonder in the story if the guy was like, but wait a minute, I didn't lose it. Here it is. And the, the ruler's going, yeah, but you could have done something with it. And so he said, no, no, you 
are no longer part of the family, give the guy who had five, give him the one. And what I love about it is what Jesus in this story, what the rich young, what Jesus has the rich young ruler say to the two. He didn't say, well done, good and prosperous servant. Well done, good and quick servant. It was well done, good and faithful servant. I'm so convinced that in the culture we live in, there is this sense of urgency. You know, I've got to, I got to become a YouTube star. I've got to start my own business and make millions. I've got to do this. I got to get noticed. I got to do the Instagram thing. I got to do whatever. And I wonder if so many times we're trying so hard to do that when what God's looking for is not a platform. He's looking for faithfulness because God can give you a platform. He can, he can give you a voice. He's looking for your faithfulness. And notice how the rich young ruler said, you've been faithful over a little bit. Now I will give you more. And I wonder if some of us have not achieved as much as we would like for the kingdom of God because we haven't yet proven that we can be faithful with what we've been given. We're too busy trying to create more. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to do well, and I don't think there's anything wrong with ambition and trying to be the very best you can be. You, know, you spend much time on Daily Hope, you're going to hear me talk about that all the time. However, we got to make sure that our goal is faithfulness not fastness. <laughs> We're not trying to be the fastest in the room. How, how quickly can I do this? How quickly can I achieve success? How quickly can I go up the social ladder? How, how quickly? No, no, no. Faithfulness. Because we're only spending a little bit of our existence on this earth. We're spending a whole lot in eternity. Now, that doesn't mean we don't do our best, but make sure you're planning for the long run. And the best planning for the long run is faithfulness because God rewards faithfulness. So if if you're you know, in a life right now and you feel like you're just getting by, you don't feel like you're anything special, you're just doing the best you can every day, that's wonderful. Because God is not looking for you to be famous. <laughs> He's looking for you to be faithful. And I got this feeling when we get to heaven one day, the people who are famous on this earth are going to be surpassed by those who are faithful. And I hope that brings you some hope today. It really did me. I've really enjoyed the book of Galatians. I want to know in the comments down below what it said to you. And I don't know what that's going to be, but I tell you what I do know. And that is that God loves you more than you understand. He's with you more than you realize. You're probably doing better than you realize. Say it with me, because you got up one more day. God has not changed his mind about you. And if nobody's told you today, I love you so much. And you're awesome. I'm going to start Ephesians chapter 1 tomorrow, and I hope you will join me right here on Daily Hope.